President, please be seated. The chamber is now back in session. So I would like to direct my question to the co-prosecution, whether uh, this afternoon you will hand over the floor to the lead co-lawyer for civil party. Because based on your request, that you would hand over the floor to the lead co-lawyer for civil party and you will uh, uh, use the time after the uh, allocated time to the civil lawyer for civil party to uh, finish your line of questions. Uh, yes, Mr. President. What, um, I will go till about 2.10 two this afternoon, and then uh, the civil parties will uh, question for the rest of this afternoon for the first part of the morning, Monday, and then I will uh, finish my questions. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Um, Mr. Witness, um, I want to go back to um, the S21 notebook uh, E38368. Uh, that's the uh, statistical uh, notebook that's titled Statistical List. And this time I've marked um, the pages and I've also put some yellow highlighting uh, where I'm going to ask you questions. Uh, on four parts of this, uh, so it should be easy for you to see now, if I may provide this to the witness. President, court officers, please uh, give the notebook to the witness to see. Now, the, uh, the part of the notebook uh, interrogator's notebook I'm going to refer you to is starts at section uh, a page a Khmer page 00007465 uh, through 7466 English 00225392 a French 00278756 through five seven. It's a section of the notebook that's titled uh, Section Three Views and Stances Regarding Interrogation. And uh, there is a discussion in here about uh, the practice of first using uh, political pressure uh, and uh, after that, uh, if necessary, using torture. The quote I want to, to ask you about specifically is uh, at number three, um, point number three, which I've highlighted for you, which reads as follows. The enemy does not confess to us easily. When they confess when we do politics, they confess at the very lowest level. A torture cannot be avoided it only differs as to whether it is a little or a lot. That's all. Uh, end of quote. Um, uh, Mr. Witness, you previously testified that these notes were from uh, instructions or uh, uh, meetings you had with the S-21 interrogators. Um, what was meant by the statement that when enemies confess after politics, they confess only at the very lowest level. What, what was meant by that? You may have a sound of the end, yeah? based on my experiences, when I was interrogated myself but in 1968, 
and then I became the interrogator myself. So I, I, I had this experience. The person who was interrogated not easily cooperate to give the answer. That's why I instructed the interrogator to start the questioning first with the biographies of the prisoners. And another story is about what I already told you about my interrogation of Koi Thun. Initially, uh, I uh, pressure during the interrogation about political aspects. So that kind of uh, question, questioning techniques was aimed at pressuring politics. But during the interrogation, I needed to bear in mind about the hierarchical order of I and him within the party system. And I also thought about Pol Pot who sat at the top of the hierarchy. And that's how I played around in my interrogation. So I encouraged my interrogator to hit at the uh, political aspect, at the political psychology. And if you could open the notebook back up again, um, there's a four places all in that same section where I've marked, um, where, I, where the letter B, uh, the post-it with the letter B, um, uh, is um, in the immediate pages after the sec quote on torture I just read, there is a list of uh, nine uh, forms of uh, political pressure or propaganda uh, that uh, have been used. And the fourth of those me methods of political pressure, which is paragraph D, uh, reads as follows. Uh, this is on Khmer page 00007466, English 00225392-93, French 00278757. A paragraph D of the political or propaganda methods of interrogation states as follows, quote, attract their feelings to revolve around family matters, the lives of their wives and children, confirming that their guilt is minor. Whether they have confessed or haven't confessed, it is imperative to always remind them that they are not the major leaders. So do not resist and make matters more serious. Do not make us torture yet or do anything else serious that will impact Upon their health. And a couple pages later in these same notes, if you, uh, the same section on methods of interrogation, paragraph 5C, uh, and I marked the letter C on that quote, Mr. Witness. Um, quote, we must be masterful and break their ideology. Make them think about something else, like the lives of their parents, wives, and children, and their lives. Uh, end of quote. Um, my, my question to you, uh, Mr. Kanguki, um, this um, uh, method is included in the political propaganda or political pressure. Did, was this considered to be part of a, a cold method of interrogation? That is to uh, talk about the wives and children of the prisoner.
Yes, that is correct. At that time, I considered this uh, tactic of interrogation as the cold methods. And Mr. Witness, if I can provide to you, um, with your leave, Mr. President, what is document E3-1544, E3-1544. Uh, this is a letter to you from one of your interrogators dated 26 September 1976 regarding the interrogation of Yah. Uh, may I provide this to you, Mr. President? President, yes, you may proceed. This is a, 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 a handwritten letter. Uh, do you recognize the handwriting, first of all? This document was used to challenge me during the investigation stage, and that was also a long time ago. This handwriting belonged to Comrade Pon, who wrote it to me. The reference in here I wanted to ask you about is paragraph 2, where it says, we received an instruction from Brother Doik to recall welfare of his spouse and children, his knowledge of their arrests and whether they know where he is now, uh, end of quote. Can you explain what was the purpose of um, raising to Yah during his interrogation the welfare of his spouse and children? Let me read. Reminding them, reminding about the welfare of the spouse and children. At this time, did you know, do you know that uh, your wife knew where you are located? I want to uh, tell you that Jazz's uh, wife was pretty young, much younger than him. So when he was brought in, he was told that kind of statement to remind him, to, to encourage him to think about the welfare of his spouse and children. And, and was this a tactic to pressure him to give a confession? Yes, that is correct. It is. It was one of the methods among the many methods used in the coal methods. Thank you, Mr. Witness. I want to go back. I read you part of this uh, statement by Noon Shea. Uh, I'm done with that document. Um, yesterday I read you part of this. I want to ask read the entire uh, statement uh, from Noon Chea that is quoted by Tet Sambat in his book, Behind the Killing Fields. Uh, this is from document E3-4202, E3-4202, Khmer ERN 00858-358-2. Uh, English 00757537, uh, French 00849, 
1-800-448-4448. And again, this is Tet Sambat uh, quoting from his interviews of Noon Chea. Quote, They normally confessed when they were beaten painfully and seriously tortured, Noon Chea said. This confession could not be valid and usable, so they must be released. Some of the accused were very young. Nunchea said that when he read these confessions, he made marks on the documents with a red pen to show they were invalid and that the prisoner was not guilty. He said that for those cases, he asked that the authorities reconsider their case and then release them, but Nunchea said he didn't know if they were let go in the end since it was up to Deutsch. End of quote. I'm going to ask you about a few parts of these, so if you'll respond to my specific questions, uh, we will cover this all. Um, you've already testified um, to sending to your superiors, San Sen and Nun Chea, uh, confession reports that describe the use of torture. Uh, we looked at a number of those this morning. Uh, on any occasion after you sent those documents to Noon Chea, describing the use of torture, did he ever call you and instruct you to stop torturing the prisoners at S21? No, never. Now, in this statement, uh, Noon Che claims to Tet Sambat that he made markings on the document on the documents in red if the confessions were invalid, the prisoner was not guilty and they should be released. Uh, Mr. Witness, was there a single occasion uh, during the time that you were chairman of S21 uh, that Noon Che asked you to release a prisoner? because their confession was not valid. There was never an instruction for release. There was only one single case of Brother Pon, who was a medic who had studied in France and who became a member of the party in France with Brother Paul. And what was the reason that Noon Chea instructed you to keep, keep um, that person, Pon, alive? What was the reason he wanted him alive? Hi. The main reason that Brother Noon told me that Brother Paul instructed us to release him. And he told me to immediately release him because we want to keep him to be used for treating our teeth. And as for other prisoners, there was no cases of release. And when you say he was released, was he actually released from the S21 premises, or was he just put to work uh, at S21? We released him, but we kept him to work within the compound of S21. He the instruction to me was that he was not uh, put in the, 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 the cell, the holding cell, or to smash him. In, in, in relation to the confessions, uh, Mr. Witness, uh, did you yourself um, have doubts at some point about whether the confessions from S21 were true? And did you ever communicate your doubts about the confessions to Noon Chea?
ปัญญา Based on my consideration, and I have I have had such feeling uh, until now. In 1964, I learned the teaching uh, methodology. At that time, I did test to my teacher who taught uh, cultural, general cultural studies. I, in, in the writing, I said that I love Pao Kong, and you know very well Pao Kong uh, is a judge in the Chinese film. Pao Kong did everything based on uh, evidence. And when I uh, was promoted in 1971 to be the chief of S21, I was assigned to do the task, but I rejected at that time. But he refused to do that, and he kept using me for that purpose. The only way was to strengthen the interrogation unit, and that was the times that I taught the interrogation techniques to the staff, including Bon. And that was the experience that I uh, learned, and I used that experience to teach other interrogators. As to the question of which was the actual document, it would be impossible for me to refer to it, so you may refer to various evidence uh, in possession of the uh, OCP to verify which which document was correct. And as in the uh, case of Goi Thun's confession, my knowledge of what my uh, capacity was lower than his, only Paul would be able to make judgment in case of uh, Goi Thun. And later on, Goi Thun told me that uh, the instruction from Pol Pot was that only the third confession was the uh, real one. As for the rest, they were all uh, fabricated. Uh, let me uh, read to you a statement from an uh, interview you gave in June 1999. This is document E3-1560. Uh, E3-1560 uh, at uh, Khmer 00320788 through 89, English 00327327, French 00327330. Um, question. Uh, Quote, I also complained to Noon Chea about the confessions that kept spreading out of control everywhere, every time. Noon Chea convinced me not to worry and said that clearly their units knew which ones were true and which ones were untrue. Comrade, just strive to do whatever is necessary to get the responses. So, nothing could be sought out to verify whether those responses were true or untrue. Uh, end of quote. Uh, do you recall uh, this conversation with Noon Chea, uh, Mr. Witness? I 
record that uh, conversation. However, uh, the uh, statement that you made uh, is rather lengthy. When I was with uh, Brother Keir or something, I made uh, some annotations. And he said that Dutch, they know how to do their work. Because previously I questioned uh, one person that uh, whether we shall arrest everyone uh, with the, uh, within the instruction from Ong Ka. And I was told that I should really view the cases uh, carefully. However, at the uh, lower level, whenever there was instruction from the center, then we would just give everything or do everything per instructions from the center. And that uh, matter was rest with noon, and noon said, I sh uh, they told me that they know how to do their work, and I should only focus on my work and do my work so roughly. On one occasion, I made one uh, local cadre. from the uh, West Zone, and he used to work uh, close to me. And I asked him whether the screening and the arresting of people and sent to S21 were all based on the instructions from the upper echelon. And he told me, in fact, instructions from the uh, center were to the sub subordinates to examine the situation. But because the lower level seems to be afraid of the center, usually everyone mentions in the instructions was arrested. And this is uh, based on what we did at the time and uh, based on what I recall so that I can uh, respond to your question. L let me also read to you um, a excerpt from your May 1999 interview. This is document E3-347, E3-347, uh, English ERN uh, 001850360337, uh, Khmer ERN 001609111, a French ERN 00160958. Um, and uh, this may be in relation uh, to the incident near the end of 1978 where uh, a foreigner was, was shot in Phnom Penh. Um, but let, let me read to you the excerpt. A quote, they did not call me to look at the battlefield. One central committee member went to look. The next morning, I asked Noon Chea to go look, and he criticized me. The police institution of the Khmer Rouge was not complete. It only had an interrogation office. And continuing in the next paragraph, I remember the CPK limited my duties as to only to get confessions, true or not, they did not worry about that. I asked to expand, expand my tasking to make things better, but they disagreed." Uh, end of quote. Do, do you remember uh, asking Noon Chea or other, other leaders to be able to investigate matters out in the field outside of S21 and what was the response you got when you made that request? Through the interpretation it read that it was made in May uh, 1999. Is that the uh, actual uh, date of that interview? 
This is what I heard uh, through the uh, Khmer interpretation. That's correct. In May 1999, I was uh, at the military tribunal. I was not even here. I was brought to the ECCC on the 31st of July 2007. This is not an ECC interview. This is an interview conducted before you came to the ECC. My, my, my question is, do you remember making a request to be able to investigate uh, matters outside of S-21? And what was the response you got when you asked to have the authority to do that? Before I made such a request, I was an experience that I was uh, used by the upper echelon in order to uh, test my investigative uh, ability. I didn't want, I don't want to talk uh, at length regarding this matter. And what I want to say is the uh, following. One day, Sun Sen uh, told me that uh, Comrade Nam Nong, the chief of a uh, police office, found out uh, some CIA agents and why at S21 uh, no CIA agent was found. I was the first person that he put that question through and not that. That in sector 21 they found uh, CIA agents And I uh, told about this event to the co-prosecutors. And he gave us firm instruction that we had to find CIA agents at S21. Later on, at the Sector 32 police office, it was uh, rumored that the uh, prisoners beat the guards up and fled. And I raised the matter with uh, some saying that I wanted to go there to uh, conduct my uh, investigation. When I told him that, he took off his glasses and uh, cleaned them. In fact, he actually used time in order to think how to respond to my question or my uh, proposal. And he blamed me and warned me just to focus on my work. That's what uh, something said and it's not what uh, Uncle Noon said. So that was a request that I made the girl to do the investigation in Sector 32. Let me read an another quote to you from e uh, interview E3-347. And this, uh, this quote, Your Honors, appears um, at English 00185030231, Khmer um, 00160908, and 00160958. French 00160953. Uh, this is another statement of yours uh, at a recorded interview in 1999. Quote, and you were talking here about uh, uh, having been informed by Pong that uh, of a statement by Pol Pot that the CIA and KGB were the same organization. And this is what you said about that in this interview. I reflected on this matter for a long time since I first heard this sentence. But it was only in 1983 that I understood the words of Pol Pot. I think that in China, they used the words revisionism, leftist, rightist, opportunism to smash people. That is, they smashed those who got in their way. In democratic Kampuchea, 
Pol Pot used the words CIA, KGB, agent of the land-grabbing Yun, all without thinking, just to smash those who got in his way. Whatever the facts on the CIA, the KGB, the agents of the land-grabbing Yun, it was just a placard that they raised to smash people. Furthermore, on the confessions, whether they were true or not, they did not think about that. They just thought about finding some reason to smash anything that blocked their path. That's why they liked confessions. Uh, end of quote. Well, why did you say, um, Mr. Witness, that Pol Pot, the CPK, leader, CPK leaders, didn't care whether the confessions were true or not? Why did you say that? I believe this statement was an excerpt from a book. And I can say that uh, this statement was mine. Bong actually said that uh, KGB and CIA agents were all in the same, but I did not believe that. For the following reasons, uh, CIA uh, belongs to the United States and it was formed in order to destroy the uh, communist bloc. As for KGB, it belongs to uh, Soviet. And when S21 was established, I went to a house of the chief of uh, spies or spionat and I found a book about that, but then I didn't have a chance to read, so I wrapped it and then I sent it to some saying. And later on, I found another book uh, authored by Alain de Loch. I also wrapped it up and sent it to my superior. So to me, it's clear the two were not the same the CIA and the KGB. However, in Cambodia, anyone who aimed to destroy the revolution, that person would be the focus. As I said, uh, one day Sun Sen called me to have a meal with him, together with Nat. And he said, uh, in Sector 32, they found uh, CIA agents. He didn't let me read that the content of the uh, letter, but he only he had it in his hand. That's the way that uh, he worked. So the purpose of uh, smashing the people was uh, to aim at those who oppose the revolution. And later on, you and I know about a document from the party where Pol Pot said, do not believe those links to the uh, police network and that we should only uh, rely on our own network. So, S21 was only an instrument uh, of the party and nobody could make a, a, a decision to make an arrest and only the party center could make that decision. And uh, that is also reflected in a certain decision documents of the party. That is uh, the uh, party center, the standing of the, the zone standing committee, and those uh, committees uh, surrounding the cities. Besides, uh, no one has the authority uh, to arrest anyone. So my apology that uh, I respond uh, rather uh, at length uh, to your question. And as uh, you raised, in China they accuse people of uh, being lefty or righties in order to destroy them. But in uh, Cambodia, I heard uh, the term that they used that they were 
they oppose the revolution, and later on they use a, a CIA or KGB agent. Even uh, this person, uh, Pon, he was accused, accused of being a, a, a KGB since he used to study in the former Soviet Union. And later on, when the Vietnamese uh, prisoners were brought in, then a new phrase emerged that uh, they were the uh, agents of the land grabbing uh, June. Let me ask you just one more about one more thing before I turn the floor over to the civil parties. Um, uh, do you remember um, while you were the head of S21, did you hear, uh, ever hear a Khmer Rouge saying, uh, it is better to arrest 10 innocent people by mistake than to free a single guilty person. Uh, do you, did you ever hear that saying? And, and if so, who, who did you hear uh, that used that expression? I actually uh, knew that expression from the uh, document about uh, S21, that is from the book authors by uh, David Chandler, and actually I translated into French, and I said that that was not the term used by the Khmer Rouge, and what I heard from my superior uh, son saying was that uh, to keep is no gain, and to uh, remove is no loss. That was the actual phrase used uh, during the time. And when did you hear Son Sen use that phrase, and what did it mean? Uh, please uh, wait for the microphone to be operational, says the President. Witness. Let me give you an example. As uh, in my case, uh, it's no no gain to, to keep if I were not to do anything or just to go and instigate here or instigate there. So that is a, an example of uh, to keep is uh, no gain and to remove is no loss. Uh, thank you, Mr. Witness. I'm going to pass the floor to the uh, civil party lawyers, and then Monday I'll have some more questions for you. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Good, mo good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, witness. My name is Marie Giro, and I represent the consolidated group of civil parties in this case with my Cambodian colleague, Ang Thich. I will be putting a number of questions to you this afternoon, and then my colleague will continue on Monday morning. As part of the questions I'll be putting to you this afternoon, I'll place on the screen for you to see a number of documents, and I'd like to give you a hard copy of these documents so that you may refer to them if need be. Mr. President, may I request your leave to hand to the witness a file with all the documents that will be placed on the screen this afternoon. Yes, uh, you may proceed. Thank you. And while this uh, document or this file is being given to you, witness, may I simply uh, inf inform you that 132 civil parties testified in this trial in relation to the harm they suffered at S21, 15 direct victims, five direct victims, and uh, there were 61 new civil parties who testified in relation 
to your trial. I would like to inform you that the civil parties are here present today. It's somewhat different from the organization you saw in case 01. Today we have 12 civil parties today in this courtroom. Konsuntara is a victim who was admitted as a civil party for having lost her brother at S21. I will start my questions by having you react to a number of uh, specific cases of close relatives of civil parties who were detained as, at S21 or present at S21. I would like you to react in relation to those specific cases of civil parties. Let me start with a case I believe you know very well. That is the case of Chao Seng. Since your judgment, the brother of Chao Seng, Mr. Chao Tim, joined the case as a civil party. This is a new element. Uh, that civil party, and I quote the reference for the parties, as uh, the reference of, of the civil party application is E3 slash uh, 4733. Chao Tim could not uh, come today. He joined as a civil party in your trial, and I'll read out to you the reason why he became a civil party, and I quote, and this is uh, an extract of document E3 slash 4733, ERN in French, 00794416, in English, 00490. 618 in Khmer 0047870 708 Chao Seng's brother says the following in the document which he tendered before the tribunal and I quote free translation the death of my elder brother Chao Seng plunged me in deep mourning he was a mentor for me and he says, he was like a father to me, and he says at the end, I decided to file an application before the Khmer Rouge Tribunal in the hope to seek the truth and justice for my brother, Chao Seng. And I'll quote free translation. Mr. Witness, I'd like you to briefly explain who was Chao Seng and under what circumstances you saw him at S21. Before I respond to your question, I'd like to uh, ask uh, you, the lead co-lawyer, whether you refer to Chao Kim or Chao Sokun. Is, uh, are you referring to one person or referring to two individuals? Chao Sokun saying Chao can you tell me whether Chao Kim and Chao Sukun refers to one individual or they are two people? President, uh, actually the name is not Chao Kim but Chao Kim. Je vous réponds avec décalage, Monsieur. I will respond, and I'm responding. Uh, after a, a certain lapse of time because I have to hear the French translation and that is why there is this lapse. The person I'm referring to is Chao Sang. He was the founder of the Pedagogical Institute and that is a person in respect of whom I will put questions to you this afternoon. I stated that Chao Kim Chao Kim's brother was a civil party in this uh, case in order to obtain information on the fate of his brother at S21. So, to be very clear, the, persons will, the person we'll be talking about in the next few minutes is Chao Seng, the founder of the Pedagogical Institute. Is that clear? Je vous demanderai d'expliquer succinctement. 
may I request you to explain succinctly to the court who was Chao Kim and whether you saw that person at S21. Allow me to respond to your question. At the time, I uh, uh, was waiting. Uh, rather, I was. I've been waiting for the uh, family members of a child saying, in case that I uh, would see his wife, so that I would say in person before her to express my regrets that I could not uh, protect him. And that is the truth. For me, Zhao Seng had, Zhao Seng did many good things. While he was at the Ministry of Education, he reformed and made a new curriculum according uh, to the French curriculum so that he could uh, educate uh, pure and progressive intellectuals. And in 1977, Brother Sonsen called me to meet him, and he said that the party decided to arrest Chao Sen. But Chao Sen was so famous in the uh, world stage, at the world stage. And for that, I should not write his uh, real name as uh, Chao Sen, but Soon. So if you look at the list of people detained at S21, you cannot find Chao Sei, but you would find Chan Soon. And I instructed Mom Nai to interrogate him when he was detained. And actually Mom Nai was a former student of Chao Sei. And I actually used him to, to work with uh, Mom Nai to interrogate uh, Vietnamese prisoners, but uh, later on, the upper echelon uh, gave me further instructions to uh, smash him. And as I uh, said, the instruction to arrest him came from the upper echelon, and that I should use an alias, uh, not his uh, real name, in the list. And I'm still waiting to meet uh, the true women from Chao Sein's uh, family. That is uh, his wife and another woman, Tan Po Lin. That is the wife of Bi Pon, who was a former uh, professor of my uh, uh, science class. I actually want to meet these two women to, to express my regret and apology that I could not protect their men. Je vous remercie. Thank you. I would like you to react to one of your statements in case number one. I see that you're listening to me in French, so I'll speak up in order for you to understand me. In case number one, and I'm referring to the transcript, in that case, E3 slash 1552, shortly before 14 hours 31 minutes, you s stated the following, and I quote, subsequently, Nguyen Chia, got to know that had wanted to protect Chao Seng, and that is why he ordered uh, that Chao Seng be eliminated immediately. And Ho received the order from Lat, from Nat to execute Chao Seng, and Chao Seng was killed. End of quote, free translation. In this passage, you refer to Nguyen Chia's role can you explain to the chamber 
what role Nong Chia played in issuing orders for the execution of Chao Seng at S21? I'd like to add that uh, when Chao Seng was sent to S21, It was around uh, August 77, and uh, before Sun Sen left, he gave me instruction for the arrangement for a Chao Sen. And when a Sun Sen went to the front uh, battlefield, a son, uh, actually Brother Chi came to be my direct uh, superior. And I kept uh, Chao Seng alive at the time, and uh, one day Nochi asked uh, what happened to Chao Seng, and that's what I told him. And that was the principal of the Santek Bao office at the time. The word uh, Santek Bao does not refer exactly to a prison, as a prison existed in France, and in that uh, context, I agree with a researcher that something about offices in uh, Cambodia refer to a location where people are to be kept. And that was the role placed by something about offices in uh, Cambodia at the time, that is, they were kept there, interrogated, and later on they were smashed. The legis legislative body at the time, you could say, belongs to the center. And, and for the executive or the judiciary powers also belongs to the party. So there was only one body, that's the party, who made every decision. Thank you. You said earlier that uh, you had been summoned by Sun Sen, and Sun Sen had warned you of the arrest of Chao Seng. Can you tell the chamber where Chao Sen was located before he was sent uh, to S21? Was he detained elsewhere? Were you aware of that uh, back then? Where was he coming from? I did not know uh, exactly where he uh, was living before he was sent to S21. I could, however, conclude that he uh, was with the Ministry of foreign affairs before his arrest. Maybe that, that, that is where he was at the time. Thank you uh, for this specification. Now I'd like to move on to another example. And this person is called Rossarin. He was the former airport uh, director, the Pochintong airport director. So does this name ring a bell? Ross Sarin. Ross Sarin, that is. <laughs> I could not get your uh, question clearly. Please spell out his name. Please spell it out. S-A-R-I-N. Son prénom. That is his first name, his name, R-O-S, his last name. He was uh, the former uh, director of Pochintong Airport. Mm. I never knew this person. I never knew Rutsaron. Thank you. The reason I am asking you this question is that his widow, 
Ms. Or Ms. Ross, to simplify things, joined as a party, as, si as a civil party in this case. And this is the civil party application E3 slash 5040. And she was admitted as a civil party owing to the suffering she felt following the death of her husband at S21. Her husband is mentioned in the list of the co-investigating judges at uh, number seven, 7,794 for the record. Uh, in her civil partner application, whose reference number I just provided, Ms. Ross explains that uh, they had returned to Cambodia from France in 1976 and that they were interned at Bang Trabai and that her husband disappeared at Bang Trabai. Then she discovered later on that her husband had been sent to S21. So I wanted to put to you a few questions about Bang Trabai and uh, the exchange of prisoners that might have uh, taken place between Bong Trabai and S21. Were you informed back then of the arrival of prisoners from Bong Trabai? Was this, did you have this kind of information available to you back then? President, civil party, us, Mr. Witness, please hold on. The floor is given to Judge Lavin. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, a point of clarification only, uh, Council Giroux. Are you speaking uh, by Bong Trabai or Bong Trabek? Because I believe it's rather Bong Trabek you're speaking about, not Bong Trabai. For me, it's Bong Trabek, says Council Giroux, but I heard Bong Trabai, says Judge Lavagne. But I'm pronouncing Bong Trabai. It, my colleague says it's correct. She says, uh, I'm pronouncing it e the way it should be pronounced in Khmer, but bon okay, it's Bong Trabek. So, um, getting back to my question, witness, uh, were you informed back then of uh, the arrival of prisoners coming from Bong Trabek at um, S21? There were many prisoners who were sent from Bang Trabai to S21, but I remember only one, Mr. Singpon. His wife and daughter also came here as a civil party in K01. And for other prisoners, I were not. Uh, I did not pay attention to. And when you tell us that many prisoners were arriving from Bung Trabek, were you informed of that ahead of time? Did you receive lists? Or did you get this information only afterwards? Information that you information that you might have read back then somewhere, or back then, were you informed of this ahead of time? And if yes, how so? Let me clarify on this matter. I knew the location of Bang Trabai through my work. There were many people sent from Bang Trabai And I noticed that there were two separate locations in Bang Trabai. One was uh, controlled by Oxavon. So there were two Bang Trabai. One was to detain intellectuals. And this uh, detention facility was under the control of Comrade Pong. For each prisoner who was sent in, I only 
knew only after they arrived. And then when they arrived, Comrade Pong informed me about the arrival. For Professor Pington, he was sent to the prison even before I became chief of the prison. And Nat told me about his uh, presence in the prison. And I was not aware of the the presence of uh, Professor Pinkton in the prison because the party, especially Brother Sun Sen, kept it as a secrecy. And even after he passed away, I was still uh, uninformed. Pum Sunari uh, was uh, also able to uh, speak about what happened at that time. So there were many people sent from Bangtrabai to the prison, and I uh, could not comment on every one of them. Even in the case of Professor Pinkton, who were kept at the prison at, until he passed away, I uh, was not informed. President, it is now convenient time for a break. The chamber will take a break until now, until 3 o'clock. Court officer, please assist the witness at the waiting room reserved for the witness during the break time and invite him back to the courtroom at 3 o'clock. The court is now in recess. <laughs>